This is a Sutotal production. Hello, surveyors. Uh, so, welcome back. This is going to be our first practice set for Chapter 5, um, Chemical Accounting, or as uh, I lovingly call it, Stoichiometry. Alright, so... Um, this first one is pretty much, uh, it's kind of two practices in one. It's a chapter four practice with naming, um, as well as, uh, getting started with balancing our equations. So here it says we have dissolved solutions of magnesium iodide and silver nitrate. They're mixed to form silver iodide solid and magnesium nitrate. Now, um, what are these guys? These names, magnesium iodide. Well, based off the periodic table, magnesium would be Mg, and we know that magnesium has a two plus charge, right? And iodide, right, that's a plus two, and iodide has a minus one. So in order to balance that charge, it should be Mg I2, and it says it's dissolved. So we also know that its state should be aqueous. Um, from there, we see it says silver nitrate as well. Silver is a G, right? And silver, even though it is a transition metal, it typically only has a plus one charge, so I'm just going to show that. And then nitrate, right, that's one of those polyatomic ions where it's NO3 and it has a negative one charge. So it should just be AgNO3, and it says this is also dissolved as well, so that's aqueous. All right, and then from there, what do we have? It says it forms silver iodide solid. Well, remember, silver is Ag with a plus one, iodide is a negative one, so it's really just a one-to-one -one ratio here, AgI, and it says it was a solid, so I'm going to put a solid right here, and then it also says that we had magnesium nitrate, so that would be Mg, and remember that has a two plus, nitrate has a negative one, so there should be two nitrates paired with that. Now, um, I put that it's aqueous because they didn't necessarily give us a state, but it's an ionic compound, um, and it didn't tell us that it was a solid. So most of the time, if they don't tell you it's a solid, um, especially since we haven't learned precipitation reactions yet, um, that's what we're looking for. We're looking at, okay, then it must be aqueous as well, because these started out as aqueous. Now, from here, we have to balance them. And so something that stands out here is I see... Um, magnesium 1, magnesium 1, but iodide 2, iodide 1. So I'm going to start and hope that I don't have to completely rewrite this, but I'm going to start with a 2 up here. So that gives me 2 iodides, 2 iodides. Now now I got 2 silvers on this side, but I only have 1 here. So I'm going to have to put a 2 right there. So iodides are balanced at 2, silvers are balanced at 2. What about the nitrate? I got 2 nitrates. And then I got two nitrates. So it looks like everything here is, in fact, balanced. All right. So, um, you know, the way we would read stuff like this is, you know, one mole of magnesium iodide produces two moles of silver iodide, something like that, right? So you have a one to two mole ratio, or you could say two moles of silver nitrate produce two moles of silver iodide. So it's a two to two mole ratio. All right. All right. Next up, it says we have calcium carbonate. Right, which that is a Ca, and on the periodic table we know that calcium as an ionic compound has a two plus charge. Carbonate is CO3, and it has a two minus charge. So when we go and write calcium carbonate, we see two plus, two minus, so it's really just a one to one for these guys. So CaCO3, that's our calcium carbonate. Now it also tells us it's a solid, and it says it's heated to form. So this is really our only reactant here. It's heated to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So calcium oxide, that's another Ca2+, and then oxide is just for oxygen, so O2-, minus. so that means I'm looking at CaO, all right? and it's a solid based off the sentence. Um, and then it says we also produce carbon dioxide gas. So carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens. All right? That's our covalent naming, and we have a gas for that. Now, if I check for balancing, one calcium, one carbon, three oxygens, one, two, three oxygen. So it's balanced as is, so I don't have to do anything extra. Everything here appears to be a one-to-one -one mole ratio. All right, for C, let's see, it says we have aqueous solutions of barium hydroxide and hydrobromic acid. So we haven't talked about acid naming, so I went ahead and gave you the formula here. And it's mixed to form barium bromide and water right water is, is the common name but we should also know what water looks like so barium hydroxide right barium is ba 
And based off its placement on the periodic table, we know it's a plus two charge. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. That's an OH minus. So two plus minus one. What does that tell us? Well, when we bring them together, there should be one barium ion and there should be two hydroxide ions, like so. All right, and it says it was aqueous, so I'm going to put AQ. All right, and then from there, it said we had hydrobromic acid, so it's it was also part of that aqueous solution, so it's HBr. AQ, all right, um, and then it formed barium bromide, BA, and uh, bromide is BR, and it based off its placement on the periodic table, it has a negative one charge, so plus two minus one, right? There should be two of those, so BR two, and then you can just put this as aqueous; it doesn't really tell us anything else, so I'm just going to say that. Um, and then we have water. So what's water plus water plus water? That'd be H2O. And water is a liquid. So if it doesn't specify it as vapor, which would be a gas, then we know it's a liquid. All right. Now from there is everything balanced. Barium, barium. OH2. Wait, I don't have an OH here, but I have O. So I should have two oxygens, four hydrogens. Uh, no. Okay, that's not balanced. Hang on. Let's move. Let's let's look at what's next hydrogen let's look at the bromine next so we see a, a two here a one there so if I put a two in front what does that that, get, that balances my bar bromines my bariums are balanced so now I really need to worry about the OH's and the H's so what do I have here I have two four so over here I have four hydrogens and two oxygens what do I have right here I have two hydrogens and one oxygen so you notice four, two, two, one. So if I just put a two in front of this, that would become four hydrogens, two oxygens, and now it's balanced. So what I see here is I have a one to two mole ratio of my reactants, right? One mole of barium hydroxide reacts with two moles of hydrobromic acid. Um, and so everything is balanced. It's all good to go. Uh, next up, what do we have? We have dissolved solutions of ammonium chloride ammonium that's a polyatomic ion that's NH4 and it had a plus one charge um, chloride is going to be Cl minus so we notice it's plus one minus one so ammonium chloride here is just going to be NH4 Cl and it says it was dissolved so I'm going to say it's aqueous since it was dissolved um, and then another dissolved solution of lead to acetate so lead is PB um, and it had a, it, that Roman numeral 2 here tells us it's a 2 plus. And then acetate is one of those polyatomic ions. You got CH3, COO, and it has a minus 1 charge. So you, what do you notice? Your cation has a plus 2, your anion has a minus 1. So there's going to have to be two of those acetate ions there. So I'm going to go with PB, CH3, COO, and I'm going to put 2 right there. Now it said it was dissolved, so that's also aqueous. Right, and then it says they mixed and they formed aqueous ammonium acetate. So ammonium was NH4 plus acetate was all this minus, right? It's a plus one, a minus one. So for them to come together, it's just one of each. So I should have NH4, CH3, COO. And it said it was aqueous, so I'll put the AQ there. <clears throat> and then it made lead to chloride solid. So remember lead is PB. And it's a 2 plus, chloride was minus 1, so 2 plus minus 1, we're going to have to have two of those chlorines. And then it said it was a solid, so I'll put the solid right there. Okay, now as we look at this, is it balanced? And no, right? Um, chlorines, chlorines, right? There was one here, two there. So I need to think about putting a 2 right there. Okay, now that changed my ammonias, ammo, ammoniums right two here one there so if I put a two there I've balanced the ammoniums now I have CH3COO I got two here and I had two there so now everything is balanced alright perfect um, and so if we're looking at reading this right uh, two moles of ammonium chloride react with one mole of lead to acetate right or two moles of ammonium chloride produce one mole of lead to chloride, right? The, just a couple of ways to read it. All right, next up we have liquid butane, which is C4H10, and it said it was liquid, 
right? That reacts with oxygen gas. Now, oxygen gas, it's not just O, right? The elemental form of oxygen is oxygen gas, and it's O2, okay? So there's our gas. It forms carbon dioxide gas, so that would be CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. Water is H2O. And remember, what did I say about water earlier? Right? If it doesn't specify, we understand it to be a liquid. So water, I'm going to make that liquid. All right, so from here, what's balance? What is, what is not balance? Well, I've got four carbons here and one there. So I'm going to start by putting a four here. All right, so what does that, that balances my fours. I'm going to wait on my oxygens because I have my oxygen on this side is by itself. So I'm not going to try and balance the oxygens yet. I'm going to go ahead and try and balance these hydrogens. So I have 10 here and two there. So if I put a five in front, that gives me 10. So I've got four carbons, 10 hydrogens. Four carbons, 10 hydrogens. Now let's look at our oxygen situation. We got two here, and then we have four times two, that's eight. So we have eight oxygens here, eight oxygens here, and then we have five oxygens there. Now eight plus five is 13, right? So that I have a total of 13 oxygens. All right, now, I have two here. Technically, you could say 13 over two as the coefficient in front, but we cannot have fractions as our coefficients. So how do I get rid of this fraction? I multiply this entire thing by two. So what happens? It becomes, using the FOIL method, ooh, from algebra, that means it's two times one is two, 2 times 13 halves becomes 13, 2 times 4 becomes 8, and 2 times 5 becomes 10. So that means I get 2 of these butane uh, liquids, I get 13 of the oxygen gases, I get 8 carbon dioxide gases, and I get 10 liquid waters. Some could argue that this might need to be gas because technically this is a combustion reaction, but I'm, I'm putting liquid because I told you, if it doesn't specify it as a vapor, put liquid. All right, next up, our last one here, it says a dissolved solution of copper one sulfate. So you have copper, which is Cu, it has a plus one charge. Sulfate is SO4 two minus. So what do you notice? Plus one, minus two. When those come together, I'm gonna have to have Cu2, right? and SO4 um, and it was dissolved so that's aqueous so you had a copper one sulfate reacts with elemental zinc now zinc is a metal so when we say a metal in its elemental form you just put one zinc so that'd be zinc solid like so that reacts to form aqueous zinc 2 sulfate so you have zinc 2 plus you have SO4 2 minus, right? 2 minus, 2 plus, then you only need one of each. So that would be zinc sulfate like so. And it says it was aqueous, so I'm going to put AQ. And then it says it formed copper solid. All right, so copper solid would just be that, right? One, we right? Because that's the same thing as zinc, right? Elementals, elemental metals, it's only just one of them. All right, so from there, what do we see? Um, the coppers are not balanced. I got two over here, I got one right here. So I need to put a two right there. Now everything else, sulfate, SO4, one of those, SO4, one of those, zinc, one of those, zinc, one. so that was the only thing I needed to do, put a two right there. All right, so hopefully this kind of helped uh, with your balancing issues, but also it gave us some additional practice with naming. Um, so until next time, stay weird, adios.